Hello everyone! Um, welcome to the channel again. You can see the background's kind of changed a little bit. Um, but please don't worry. Um, today's video, I'm going to be opening a, a suit, a very old antique suit. I believe it's about 130 years old from the photos that I saw. It appeared to be maybe 1890s, 1900s, kind of hard to tell. Once we open it and we start looking at the lining and stuff like that, hopefully, I'm hoping, we should start to kind of figure out what kind of, what year it was made. But it can be difficult to date these things. So this came all the way from America. And when I read the name of the maker, it appeared to be maybe a German Jewish tailor. Kind of has a uh, Jewish name, a German Jewish name, I believe. Um, which is really interesting. And it's made in America. So it should have some European style to it. Now this one is particularly rare because, I mean, most suits you find of this era are very formal. They're very, I, 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 I pulled the knife out, sorry. Um, they're very formal and they're black or they're evening stuff or they're morning stuff and they're very, very formal indeed. Hope you didn't see my dress. The difference with this one is that it's actually a, a very casual suit. It's a very casual fabric, which I believe is a hound's tooth. Now, it appears that Japanese customs opened this and resealed it. So I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know if I trust that they didn't break it somehow. Okay. So here's the packaging. Bubble wrap. I I'm doing it here because I feel like I have more space. I also have this little movie table. This table that moves. Moving table. So I thought it would be easier to show you what I'm doing here. The fabric's fantastic. But it definitely looks like customs has ruined the, the way it was packed. Now, I don't expect this to fit me. This is actually a size and a half too big. So I don't think it's gonna fit me, but wow. Wow, it's incredible. Look at this fabric. It almost looks like it was made yesterday. This is definitely new old stock. This, this hasn't been used at all. It's beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. So we're gonna go for some close-ups, but initially I'll un unpackage it and then we'll do some close-ups and I'll show you some details. Oh my goodness, so let's just throw this stuff everywhere, because why not, it's a party in here. Oh my goodness, and it smells wonderful for some reason. So, one good way to tell if something's been used a lot is to check the silk on the back, because silk is very delicate and gets ruined very easily. Um, it appears there's some stitching coming undone here, but for something that's 130 years old, you know, you, you kind of expect the worst, but look inside here. This is absolutely beautiful, the lining is fantastic in fact um, let me pop this here because obviously I love wearing antique clothes I'm curious if this waistcoat fits me if it does I'll be very happy but I don't think it will I 100% I, I do not think it will um, we can try anyway this is a double breasted one it has a 4x4 four uh, four by 4x2 four, uh, four button closure one button in the middle here Oh, it's got two inside. Okay, so if we open up the waistcoat here, it has, excuse my um, tie that's too long. Um, you can see there's two buttons to fasten it snug in inside. So <laughs> let's just try this on for the sake of it. Oh my God, I actually think this might fit. I mean, it's too big for me, obviously, but you know what? In I used to care a lot about fit. I used to work in a suit shop and we used to care a lot about how things fit and being bespoke and being beautiful, but when it comes to antiques, you really can't be picky and choosy. This is purple. This suit is actually purple. <gasps> oh my God, what do you think? Heavens, I haven't tightened the, be the, be the, the belt at the back. Let's gently pull that down. But heavens, I don't think that's such a bad fit. It's a little bit wide on the chest here, but if, you, if we cinch the waist in, maybe it'll be fine. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. This is great, okay, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so I don't have much memory, so I'm gonna have to keep pausing and restarting, so. All right, we started again. Okay, so let me take this off. In fact, no, bloody hell, I'll keep it on. This is fantastic. It did say the buttons had all been replaced with original, uh, not original ones, but ones that were very similar. I'm not sure why they would have done that, why the seller would have done that or if that's just some information that they've had. Um, oh my goodness, this is beautiful. This is unbelievable. Oh, look at this jacket. Oh, okay, I, I, it's stuffed. So let's remove the stuffing first. And then we'll have a look 
at the jacket itself. Look at this jacket, this is wonderful. So this is a, a four, four button sack coat. Um, it's, it's amazing. I actually think this might fit me. Please, I'll cry. Um, yes, um, no breast pocket, as was common in the 1890s, but it's also not uncommon to see that in the 1900s. Flap pockets that are, oh, I don't know how to show this. I'm so, I'm so sorry, I haven't done this before. Um, you can see the flat pockets, they're rounded and then straight on one edge. It's a very 1890s detail, but again, carries over to 1900s. Small ticket pocket with the exact same configuration. Maybe if I put my hand on it, you, you can kind of see what I mean, but it's a, uh, oh heavens, we have lots of white things. You can see the pocket itself is curved and then it goes straight. Very wonderful detail. Okay, well, <laughs> I've got the waistcoat on, so Shall we try the jacket? I really thought I would be sitting down. Actually, let's let's uh, review the damage. There's a small nick here, but it doesn't look to be very bad. It's in impeccable condition. It's unbelievable condition. Unbelievable. So we'll undo all of these buttons. Now, like I say, this is a, a size and a half too big, so let's not expect it to fit me. But let's wear it just for fun. Oh my God. Oh, heavens above. I think it fits. Oh, I think it fits. Are you joking? I didn't expect this to fit. I just expected it to be like a little reference piece. As you can see, the sleeves are too long for me. Um, that's okay. I wouldn't even mind wearing them like that. But, you know, what you can do is, which is a very easy fix. If you, I don't really like altering antiques because I don't like cutting. But what I would do, I would just cheat and I don't really care so much about looking bespoke and beautiful and such. I, I would honestly just tuck those in like that and just press it and tack them down. But like, just to give you an idea of what this would look like if it was the right length, just about like that. So there, there's, a, there's a saying where you have to have like an inch and a half of sleeve showing. That's a very modern idea. Uh, if you look at old pictures, most people aren't showing much cuff. I'm sorry, I have to check in a mirror if this actually fits me. So, the video, I mean, the video? Looking in the mirror has confirmed that this does fit me. It's not perfect, obviously, it wasn't made for me. But my goodness, why does it fit? It's not meant to fit, it's meant to be too big. Maybe they got, you know, went mental with the measurements, but look at this color. I don't know if you can tell, but this is basically black, gray, purple, with a red check running through. We'll do some close-ups of the fabric. This is essentially a purple suit. Like, the, the most, the thing you see most about this suit is that it's purple. The next thing we have to look at is the trousers. So, we'll do a more, oh, hell yeah. We'll do a more detailed overview of the trousers once, once I've got everything out and I've had a proper look, but here are the trousers. Um, so you can see it's very American looking. Um, it's not so deep at the back here, but it is, ah, oh, you can't see it, can you? Because I'm so, in the same color. Hold on. What I want to show you is the fishtail at the back, as we now call it a fishtail. So you can see it's very triangular, very sharp. British and more European styles, well, mainly British styles would be a little bit softer, kind of uh, wider cut and more rounded. And then the, the kind of German, American ones are very, very sharp like this. So we can tell it's definitely American. I mean, it came from America anyway, so we can guess it was from America. Um, we have a small uh, a watch pocket, as we call it, a watch pocket. Um, and then we have side pockets here, which are, again, can you see that? Slightly rounded, slightly rounded as they come around. On the back, we have one back pocket here, and you can see uh, the fabric there, as it's been sewn. Uh, very deep pocket, no button in the back there. And there is another one on this side too, so there's two buttock pockets, two bottom pockets, back pockets, for the bottom. And of course we have a cinch belt. Cinch belt right here. Which I believe it says rest. It says rest on there. Um, which is in great condition, doesn't look like it's rusted at all. And the buttons here are all metal as well. Wonderful piece. Absolutely spectacular, can't believe I'm holding this. Can't believe I'm wearing half of it. Or two thirds of it. So let's take a look at the, um, 
the fly in the trousers itself. I'm terribly sorry that I'm not very good at displaying things. I'm not very good at this, am I? So let me put the trousers on here. And because I don't want the I don't want the weight to upset them, if you know what I mean. I don't want the weight to pull on anything. So we'll take a look at the fly. And you can see obviously there's a a hook and an eye essentially. A hook and a latch. Um, maybe we can do some zooms later. And then this is the French the French bearer. It's incredibly small. It's just this small little piece of fabric here. So the French mainly the British ones don't even have not many British trousers have these French bearers. The French trousers obviously do, and they're normally a strip of fabric as I've shown in some other videos. Um, in this case it's very small and that's normal for American so that the, the kind the one I'm wearing I believe is an American pattern as well and it's very similar um, it has how many buttons going down the fly here so one two three four fly buttons four fly buttons here and then we have the hook and the and the eye here the French bearer button here and it looks like it should be just a raw edge in here you can see some of the wool some of the wool is like fraying out it's just a raw edge and look at the lining it has a full um, curtain inside this is a waist curtain most British trousers don't have waist curtains but there's a very long waist curtain for you there um, fantastic so yeah we'll look at some of the stitching and some of those construction techniques and maybe I'll ask some friends and we can maybe figure out an exact year for these but Boy, is this cool. So I'm going to try the trousers on now. I'm going to see if I can get the whole suit on, seeing as these fit. So bear with me just a second. If I can be completely honest, this unboxing didn't go exactly as I'd planned because I thought I would unbox the, the suit and then I would show it to you. I didn't expect to be able to wear the thing. You can see I've tightened the cinch back a tiny bit, but normally I do. I like quite a snug fit around the waist, but the trousers fit me. The good thing with these old clothes, especially the trousers, is that you can just adjust the waist size very, very easily. And uh, so if you gain a little bit of weight or you have a big meal coming up, you can just loosen it. Here we go. Here I am wearing it, the whole suit, the whole three piece, and it fits perfectly. It's actually incredible. It doesn't fit perfectly, I shouldn't say that. It just fits. Like it does fit me, it doesn't fit perfectly, but it does fit. And that's amazing, I can't believe it. Um, yeah, the sleeves are a little bit long, the trousers are a little bit long, but um, I could take that up maybe in an hour, hour and a half. And then I have a perfectly fitting suit from 1890. I still can't believe it, I'm absolutely chuffed. This is bonkers. Look how high it buttons. You know, it's not a perfect fit, but it fits incredibly well for something that was made 130 years ago that I didn't expect to fit me at all anyway. And not only that, it's also mint condition. There are no, there, there's no problem with the fabric. Normally the fabric's got cuts or it's got grazes or there's something wrong with it. This one is actually beautiful. It's just perfect. Like I say, there's one nick on the shoulder here, but no one will ever notice. Now, th obviously, this suit was made in 18, I think 18, 19, 1900s. Um, it was labelled as 1910s, but I don't think it's that uh, that late. So the cut is completely different. Now we expect things to fit very tightly and very slimly. We expect the the sleeves and stuff to be very slim, but look how wide the slim the uh, the sleeve is. It's very wide all the way around, and the same can be said for the body here. It comes in slightly at the waist, but really, it's just wide. It's wide at, it, uh, wide at the hips, wide at the waist. Um, and yeah, kind of unstructured, soft shoulders, so they just kind of curve around very nicely and gently. And the trousers, again, they're not super wide, like 1930s trousers, but they're a little bit wider. Oh, I'm over the moon.
Well, I guess I'll end the video here with me wearing this beautiful suit. The truth is, I don't actually think it's supposed to button up here. I think this is supposed to be a roll lapel. It sits better like that. Um, I can't believe that this suit actually fit me. I'm sorry about the editing of this video. I know that it doesn't really match up very well. I was just so excited. I didn't really think about continuity or really what I was saying. So I've tried to make a coherent video out of this mess. But um, thank you for joining me along the journey. And I hope you enjoyed some close-up shots of this suit. We didn't end up figuring out an exact date, which is very common. If the garment isn't dated, it's very unlikely that you're going to figure out an exact year. But we reckon from about 1895 to 1905 is a very good margin for this suit. Now this isn't the only antique suit that I own, I do own quite a few more and I'm always getting new pieces. If you want to see those items in more detail, kind of like I did at the end of this video with the kind of showcase, then let me know because that's something I can definitely do and I can of course talk in more detail about those items, how they're made, when they were made, all that kind of stuff. So let me know in the comments down below. Um, check me out on Instagram, Kaza Sencho is how you pronounce it, Umbrella Captain in Japanese, I don't know what I was thinking. You can also buy me a coffee if you'd like to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching guys, end of video, done!